Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. We got a scripture for April 15th. Yes, we do. A do not fear. It's a good one for you. Yeah. Do not fear. But even though taxes are not due until Monday the 17th. That's true. However, people feel it. Zephaniah 3.16. Zephaniah 3.16 says, On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. Wow. Time to get up and do something, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do not let your hands hang limp. So today... We're going to talk about money, money being a defense. I know. A defense. It's it's so good. It's amazing. Have you ever been to a football game where the cheerleaders were chanting, defense, defense, push them back, push them back, way back? Mm. Perhaps you were watching a recent NBA basketball game where the fans were chanting, defense, defense. Regardless of the sport, defense means to stop the advancement of an opponent, All right. if you will, an adversary or enemy. So you can imagine our surprise when we recently got a fresh look at Ecclesiastes 7.12. Ecclesiastes 7.12, which says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Hallelujah for wisdom. We read 13 translations for that scripture, and here are two of them. First, Ecclesiastes 7.12, 7.12, classic Amplified. For wisdom is a defense, even as money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is the wisdom that shields and preserves the life of him who has it. That's right. The Hebrew word for defense, H6738. H6738, and it means shade, shallow, shadow, shadow, Mm -hmm. and protection. In other words, your defense should protect and shield you from assaults of the enemy. The ravages of the world turned upside down, and the desperation that comes from living in lack. Lack steals more than your money. That's right. It robs you of your dreams, your future, your hope. Your ability to bless those you love and have those God directs you to bless. Money is your defense. The second scripture I want to share is Ecclesiastes 7.12, 7.12 Message Bible. I love this. Double protection, wisdom and wealth, plus this bonus. Wisdom energizes its own. Yes, it's a one-two, two, sorry, one-two punch. I'm jumping ahead. Go That's ahead. That's all right. Mm. Wisdom and wealth. That's right. You have to have the you have to have the wisdom to go with the wealth. That's wisdom exactly in the word right. of God. That's good. Are you ready for the rest of the story? Ecclesiastes seventeen seven, seven eleven seven eleven. Message Bible says, wisdom is better when it's paired with money, especially if you got both while you're still living. How about that? How about I love that? it. Yeah. Now, this should make you want to read both scriptures in context. So here's Ecclesiastes 7, 11, and 12. Wisdom is better when it's paired with money, especially if you get both while you're still living. Double protection, wisdom, and wealth, plus this bonus. Wisdom energizes its owner. Mm. Wisdom energizes its owner. Can somebody say Hallelujah. hallelujah? need to say that to yourself. Wisdom yeah. energizes its owner. If you have wisdom, you can get wealth. Without wisdom, you'll never keep wealth. That's right. Wealth and wisdom have you, well, wealth and wisdom are your defense. So you'll not have to live unimportant, unrecognized, unprotected, unappreciated, unwilling, unfruitful, and unproductive lives. Mm. Here are seven strategies you defending your potential for success? Hmm. Number one, a strong defense will keep you from feeling unimportant. There is something we need to settle once and for all. Everybody, and I mean everybody, who can fog a mirror, meaning that they have the breath of life flowing in their nostrils, is important. Nobody, regardless of how seemingly insignificant they may seem by the world standards, is unimportant. 
The homeless person sleeping under a bridge is important. The high school dropout who can barely provide for his or her family is important. How can I be sure that these people are all important? Well, you just have to read the Word of God. Yes. Matthew 25:45. Matthew 25:45 Contemporary English Version says, "The king will say to them, whenever you fail to help any of my people, no matter how important they seem, unimportant. Excuse me. Yes, how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me." Wow. There's no need for another scripture, really, or personal observations or anything else, because according to the scripture, everyone is important. In other words, if you were born, you have a, you know, we like to always say, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose on the earth. Yes, good, baby. Number two, you will never be unrecognized in the kingdom of God. Now, you may never be recognized by the paparazzi. But you'll always be recognized, come on now, by the host of heaven. Mm. It's clearly evident who you are, who's living in you, as the fruit of the Spirit is manifested in your life. Even though Joseph's brothers didn't recognize him when they arrived in Egypt, he recognized them. Sometimes people don't recognize you because of the changes in your life. And one other thing, no matter what you've been or are Going through, God will always, always recognize you. Even Jesus' own brothers didn't recognize how important he was when they, you know, when he first started his ministry. Wow. Yep. Number three, an unprotected believer is a vulnerable Christian. The first thing any enemy wants to do is assess your strengths and weaknesses to find out where you may be weak and vulnerable. Numbers 13, verses 18 through 20. Numbers chapter 13, verses 18 through 20 in the New Living Translation says, See what the land is like and find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. It happened to be the season for harvesting the first ripe grapes. You know, we were thinking back on this and thought about the old song, Oh, I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole stole from me. That goes way back. But the point is, where are we unprotected from the attacks of the enemy? Maybe it's a sneak attack or a full onslaught. Really, is it in your mouth? Are you speaking words of life and possibility, or are you speaking words of death and defeat? Are you unprotected in your mind? Do you think on or about that those things that are sinful and should be nowhere be found in your mental thought process? process? Or are you thinking how you're going to get out of your current situation and move on? We need to pull up Ephesians 6.13. Ephesians 6.13, and we must pull on the, put on the whole armor of God and have it as our defense, or we're going to end up losing <clears throat> Question for you consider every day. It's one you just posed, honey. Do you think only or about things that are sinful and should not be found in your thought process? Do you speak words of life and possibilities? Or do you speak words of death mm-hmm. and defeat? Think about those things. Number four, being unappreciative will never give you the victory you seek. Having health and wisdom is your best defense. Wealth and wisdom. Health helps, though, really. Yeah. Having wealth and wisdom is your best defense. Yes, having your opinion trivialized or your words go unheard. Ecclesiastes 9, 16, 9, 16, you live in translation. See, even though wisdom is better than strength, those who are wise will be despised if they're poor. Wow. What they say will not be appreciated for long. Wealth and wisdom are your protection against insignificance. Mm. Number five, you must be unwilling to give up, give in, back up, or back down. (laughs) Now, where have you heard that before? (laughs) Yep, we don't tire of telling them. When do we, when we do, let's put it this way, when we do what's right before the Lord, he is unwilling to do without us. Think of that. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it's called doing the word. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Classic Amplified says, Let each one give as he has made up his 
own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Hallelujah. The key to God's unwillingness to do without us is found in our unwillingness to obey his word. When we are willing, he is blessed. Amen. Number six, being unfruitful is not a kingdom principle. Without question, God wants us living productive lives. The scriptures are replete, replete with examples of increase, including a prime example given in the parable of the talents. Hallelujah. I was just today reading Titus about 3.14. Titus 3.14, classic amplified. And let our own people really learn to apply themselves to good deeds, to honest labor, honorable employment, so that they may be able to meet necessary demands whenever the occasion may require, and not be living idle, uncultivated, and unfruitful lives. Wow. That is a wild scripture. We can give no space to ungodly things, nor time to ungodly people, unless we're leading them to the Lord. Mm. Please ask, I'm sorry, Ephesians 5.11. Ephesians 5.11. To have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Wow. Number seven, an unproductive life is not an option for us as Christians. There is one thing that will keep you, me, all of us from leading and living an unproductive life. In Titus 3.14 again, my husband's devotional chapter of the day, Titus 3.14 said, Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. As we reflect on these, well, seven things, we'll recognize that wisdom and wealth will lead us, seriously lead us, on the path of victory and being able to overcome every attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. That's a good way to start a Saturday. Hallelujah. So pumped up. Hmm. Wow. I don't read time as often, but I did today. It blessed us. Hallelujah. Go to heraldherring.com. You're blessed by the teaching and the ministry. Click the button that says Soul Seed. Just ask God what he did have you say. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts from the Word of God. And don't forget to apply them. That's it. God bless you. Bye-bye.